Okay, welcome everybody. Good evening. This is the Monday, March 15th, 2021, regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. Um, for anybody in the audience, if you would mind turning your phone off or putting it in airplane mode as we proceed through, um, that'll help us greatly with our, with our broadcast. And if you would all join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, Pam, will you please take roll? I will. President McFarland. Here. Vice President Rausch. Here. Secretary Singer. Here. Treasurer Lauterbach. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blasey. Here. Member Hatfield. Here. All accounted for. All right. Fantastic. Moving into the consent agenda, uh, we have item 2.1, approval of the minutes from the February 15th, 2021 regular meeting. Item 2.2 is a list of staff members uh, that will be resigning as well as their effective dates. Item 2.3 is a list of recommended folks for employment. Uh, 2.4 is approval of the school's sy school system's bills for the month of January 2021 as listed in the check registers prepared by Ms. Holderby in the total amount of $7,426,376. And item 2.5 is uh, approval of requested to pay a legal bill in the amount of $1,643. Make a motion to approve consent agenda item 2.1 through 2.5. Second. Motion by Phil, uh, support by Pam. Any discussion regarding uh, item 2.1 through 2.5? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Next up, um, we have our presentations. We have two presentations, or we have two groups here that can present under one topic, and it's our leadership programs at our high school that we're going to bring to you today. And I believe we're going to bring them in from the hallway, and we'll turn it over to the representatives in a second here. You can come right up to the mic, and um, whoever's going to start can, may do so. I'd introduce you, but I'm not sure who's going to start. So, Hi, I'm Will Cooper. Uh, I go to Dow High, and I'm part of Student Leadership 1, <clears throat> third hour. Hi, my name is Jenna Schaefer. I go to Dow High, and I'm a part of Student Leadership 1, fourth hour class. Hi, my name is Taylor Newman. I go to Dow High, and I'm a part of Student Leadership 1, fourth hour class. So student leadership used to be just elected student council members, and uh, now it's open to the entire student body as, as a class. Student leadership used to be one section of class, used to be one section of classes, but now we have three, two of those being student leadership one, and one of those being student leadership two. And as of just a couple years ago, we have started including freshmen, so now all four grades are able to take the class. Now that we have two sections of student leadership, student leadership one is more of a foundation for learning about your leadership skills, learning about your strengths and weaknesses, and in student leadership two, you put those to work and you have more of a role at Dow High. You plan dances, assemblies, and spirit weeks. This year in student leadership, we've gotten to do many opportunities, one of those being pen pals over at Seabrook Elementary School. And on a normal day, we would get to go over to the classrooms and interact with the kids. But because of COVID, instead we have been sending letters to them and getting to talk to the kids. And a recent project that I am in, uh, again at Seber Elementary, we are doing reading groups with them and sending videos of us reading so that the kids can get better at their reading skills and still get to interact with the older kids. So part of a group that I'm currently in is we are uh, making baggies with different uh, charger spirit items. And we're going to, we're working with Jefferson Middle School and Mrs. Sherman to be able to pass those out to eighth graders as like a gift to the older kids, to the younger kids, and make them feel more comfortable about their transition to high school. Something that we're working at um, at Dow High is working on mental health and awareness and things like that. So some a big project that we're working on right now is a Zen room, which is basically somewhere that students can go if they're having some sort of anxiety attack or just need to take a deep breath for a second. 
We recently got it approved by our principal, and that's what we've been working on ever since. Nice. So at Dow High, we are very lucky to have many community resources that we are able to reach, and one of them that we use the most is the ROCK program. Tyler Porter comes into our class once a week with a new lesson every time. They mostly deal with awareness, kindness, leadership, and things like that. A big project that we've been working on is working on our character strengths, which is we basically took a quiz which told us like what strengths were our better ones or our weaker ones, and we worked on one of our weaker ones for six weeks and it has really helped us. Along with the ROCK program, we got to work with our community listens, and one of the ladies who worked there, Misty, came into our class a couple days a week for about a month and helped us work on our listening and our communication skills and being able to look at other people's point of views and understand all of their emotions. So future partnerships we're working on is working with uh, DEI from downtown uh, to find more projects that uh, are with, with a, a quality and inclusion. And we're also trying to work with mindfulness people to help be more mindful in our projects. This year we got to work with the Salvation Army and do an adopt a family. Both the third and fourth hour classes each got their own family. And we all picked from a list and got to buy Christmas presents for a family. This was a super good event for us and it was really mind opening and we all realized how grateful we are for everything and it was good to give back to a family in need. Along with giving back to the people in our community, we also wanted to give back to the animals in our community. So mm -hmm. a group that I'm in right now is doing a fundraiser to make money to make blankets and toys for the Dogs of the Humane Society to improve their lives there until they get a forever home. Open Door is a homeless shelter in Midland that uh, provides uh, food and clothes for homeless people in, in the area. And what we're currently doing is we're working on a can drive and we're going to donate those uh, non-perishable food items uh, to Open Door. And we're also working on clothing items to donate as well. And SL2 is, SL2 is up next. Okay. What is up, everybody? <laughs> Um, so for student leadership, this is our upperclassmen version of the student uh, leadership classes. And we have Tess Striebel here, which is a, who is a senior. We have Fatimi Khan, who is a senior. We have Eliana Tierney, who is a junior. Brooke Seymour, who is a junior. And Emily Danielson, who is a uh, senior. And I'm Ethan Houck, who is a uh, junior. So, yeah. Uh, moving on with some of our t activities here at SL2. So because of COVID, we really had to adapt to the situation. And one of the big things that we've done is virtual assemblies. Um, we have a new class here at Dow High called Bolt Media. And they make videos for Dow High and just specialize in that category. So we really partnered with them for a few of these assemblies and um, just put together different segments with band, uh, POM, different types of topics like that. And uh, so far, we've made two uh, virtual assembly videos. and. Um, I, I think they've been pretty successful. And uh, as you are aware, we had a shutdown for two months uh, during the winter time. So we had to do some online spirit activities and we utilize a lot of social media, a lot of Instagram, uh, just reminders. And one big video that we did was with our staff here at Dow High. Uh, we made a fun little elf video <laughs> and uh, uh, we got a lot of feedback from that, which was good. So. <laughs> Moving on. So just to kind of touch on some of our non-COVID year activities, um, these are just two of the big projects that we usually focus on. So the first of which is the Go Dance for Charity, which um, all of those non-perishable food items that we raise from that dance actually goes to the open door, which SL1 kind of touched on. Um, so typically we host a dance, and instead of asking people to pay money for their tickets as an entrance fee, we ask people to bring at least two or more non-perishable food items. And so last year we were able to cut uh, to to collect 700 cans that we donated to Open Door. Um, another big project that we usually do is Special Olympics, and so the aim of that event is to unify general and special education students. And that's a relatively newer project over the past few years, but that's been really successful. Um, and so we're hoping to kick that up next year again. And so in the past, we've done basketball, bowling, and kickball, and you can kind of see some pictures down there that were all taken pre-COVID. So. <laughs> 
So a new event that we put on this year is Kindness Week. So earlier um, this year, the board attended a conference hosted by the Midland Area Community Foundation, where we learned about the importance of kindness and leadership. And through that um, conference, we were able to receive a $450 grant to help us put on this week. So what we did is we really focused on promoting kindness, nonviolence, and um, togetherness in our school. And each day of the week, we assigned a specific word, such as gratitude, laughter, motivation, mindfulness, and kindness. And with each word, we kind of made a specific task to be associated with that day. And we had students complete that task in their third hour class. So, for example, for Monday, which was gratitude, we had students take about five minutes in their class to um, really think about three things that they were grateful for and share that with their class or their classmates. And at the end of the week, we collected all of those filled out worksheets and we put them in a drawing and two uh, students got picked to um, pick out a free t-shirt from our school store. And along with the grant money, we were able to purchase t-shirts for our administration and our class and also um, make some custom kind Dow High stickers. Hmm. Uh, so a brand new group we've started to fit with MPS's new DEI or diversity equity and inclusion in initiative uh, is our own diversity equity and inclusion group. So the goal of this group is just currently to educate people in our class about different uh, issues having to do with diversity equity and inclusion. Uh, last week was our first presentation with the class. We went over some uh, basic terms related to racial inequality. Uh, and then currently we're working on doing a presentation with terms from different areas of inequality, things such as disabilities, mental health, single parent homes, uh, things that haven't been touched on more recently. We also had Mr. Hogan come in and give us a synopsis uh, for his plans in the MPS district for the year so that we're keeping in contact with him. And then as far as hope for school wide, we're looking at putting those initiatives out to the school uh, as early as next year, but currently we're focusing on more internal presentations. Okay. Uh, another new group that we have at Dow High is called Peer to Peer, and they focus on mental health awareness and suicide prevention throughout the school. And at the beginning of the year, our class was fortunate enough to take a suicide awareness safe talk training. And then each month, they work on putting out um, awareness and projects about a certain aspect of mental health. And March's project was focused on um, healthy sleeping habits and how the right amount of sleep can help your mental health. Um, to get all these projects running and events that we've all talked about, we need a lot of money and fundraising. So that's a huge part of our class. And in non-COVID year fundraising, it's a lot easier. So we usually do pizza, which is just pre-ordered pizza um, to our third hours. So like, you know, um, a student will order a pizza through us and we will deliver it to them during their like a Friday at the end of the month. And it raises a lot of money and really helps us put on like different um, events like the glow dance, Sadie's and like assemblies. And then we also have like donut Thursdays, which we used to do <laughs> and it was really fun. And um, we would just like pick up donuts and we would like pass them out during lunch and there was it was a huge hit. <laughs> um, and then um, some upcoming events that we're really focusing on is just like working on DEI efforts because um, it's super important to all of us and then we're hoping to do another charity week like we did last year but it's going to be a little different because of COVID and then just like prepping our students because most of us are seniors that they can run this class um, successfully next year. So yeah, we want to thank you guys for having us. And if you have any questions, please ask them now. <laughs> Could you recognize your sponsors for us? Your teachers. teachers. Um, yes, we would like to thank our SL1 teacher, uh, Ms. Outnan, and our SL2 teacher, Ms. Berg. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> they do all the work. We don't need any yeah. <laughs> They do a lot for us. <laughs> okay, we'll open it up to any questions or comments. I'm sure we've so, got some. So I love how you guys have adapted to the new reality of COVID. What, what do you think will stay? What have you learned that's a better way of doing things and you won't change it back? I think we've really learned how to just be very inclusive of all students throughout this and really finding ways that all students can get involved in school spirit. You know, when you think of assemblies, not every student loves to like be up there in front of everyone participating in games. So think, really thinking of other ways to kind of include students and really get them thinking about school spirit um, out of your traditional terms. How are you guys doing fundraising in a COVID environment? You, you mentioned the non-COVID years. What do you do now? Um, 
Yeah. Um, so basically, we're just doing like um, a lot of like donations and things like that, and doing like contact um, contact lists, like pickups or like um, like T-shirts and stuff like that. But mostly, like it's um, kind of worked out because there hasn't been a lot of things that we need to really spend our money on. And thankfully, we saved a lot of money from last year and the years prior that it really hasn't been a huge issue for us. But it's definitely like you know like challenged us a little bit, but we have all really adapted well, I feel like. And another thing that we have done is restaurant fundraisers. So we did one with Panda Express earlier on this year where we um, posted flyers everywhere, really encouraged students to go, and then a certain percentage of what Panda Express made that day um, went to us, which was really nice. So another question I have is, sorry to have my mic on. Um, <laughs> I'm amazed at the level of involvement in the community that you all are, are interacting with. How, how do you do that? Uh, how many people are involved in the student leadership organizations, SL1, SL2? Um, there's only a few of you representing, I imagine, a much larger group. Um, how many people about are About overall combining both SL1 classes and our SL2, I believe we have about 65 kids, somewhere around there. Yeah. And next question, and, I, and I'll leave it alone. Um, are there any big projects that you're collaborating with with maybe uh, Midland High School? Um, actually, as of right now, no. I mean, I know in past, like, our student councils have collaborated on, like, things such as prom because in past years we've done combined proms. Um, as of right now, I don't think that there's any collaborating, at least between student leaderships. Okay. Which you're going to hear from Midland High as well. Yeah, yeah. I was just was curious. I'm wondering, um, is the program growing, or has it been three classes for quite some time? No, yeah, it's definitely growing. So this is the first year that we've had, I believe, SL1 as an option, um, but we actually also had to expand SL1 into two classes, like um, the SL1 kids shared earlier. So there's a third hour and fourth hour, both with both which has about 20-some kids in it, and then there's an SL2 class, which has about 20-some kids in it. And so it definitely has expanded over the past year. And then is there a structure to the classes like there is in a, like a student council? Uh, is there a hierarchy or is everyone kind of on a level playing field? Yeah, so SL1 um, doesn't have any executive board or anything. They're kind of more on um, a level field of just like they're all growing together and learning about their leadership um, abilities and kind of growing through that. But actually the six of us that you see here, all of us are the um, executive board for SL2, so we kind of run the class alongside Ms. Berg in that sense. And what are your responsibilities? Um, so we don't have any like president, secretary, like, like things such as that. So we kind of all just work together and um, juggle things, you know, and kind of like hand out responsibilities um, based off of just like people's general strengths. Um, I would say that what we mainly do is kind of just like head up groups because there's so many groups it would just be really hard for Ms. Berg to um, give everyone, you know, directions all at once. And so typically when we have different groups going on per month, um, so let's say if we have like the DAI group and the peer-to-peer -peer group and a charity week group, we would have, you know, a few of us in each group just to make sure that the other general students just have someone to go to if they have questions or um, need just general guidance on, you know, what to do during that day or like for whatever project. And then how do you come up with what you want to do for the year, or is that does the instructor give you what you're going to do for the year? Um, so, I mean, like, it kind of, I feel like our schedule is kind of already um, almost made out for us, like, based off of, like, past years. So when it comes February, we know, okay, we're going to have a Sadie's dance at this point. When it um, is in the fall, we know that we're going to be doing a Midland Dow um, like assembly, things like that. But I think that we also just are able to kind of like throw in different projects like peer-to-peer, -peer, DEI, like when they come up and when they're presented to us. So we really do have flexibility when it comes to that. Um, so we're just kind of able to pick up whatever projects that are, you know, that we're passionate about and kind of want to implement in the school or in the community. And overall, what's been a, a growth for you in, in this classroom, uh, maybe a surprise area of your life that you've grown in? that you didn't realize you would when you got involved? Um, I don't know if any, I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I don't know about anyone else, but I've been um, at least around Miss Outland since I was a freshman and involved in leadership since I was a sophomore. And coming into leadership as a sophomore, I was very quiet, very reserved, very shy, not very confident in 
either my speaking abilities or just like abilities as a leader. And I would definitely say that I've grown because my sophomore self would not be standing up here talking to everyone and like answering questions and stuff. So I think that it definitely has equipped me with a confidence and kind of just like made me realize that I have that in me and that I can, you know, um, give back to my community and teach things to other students and be an example in that way. Right. How much addition? Like yeah. How much time are you guys spending uh, on all of these activities outside of class? We do spend, I feel, at least we do spend quite a significant amount of time of class, um, you know, just kind of preparing and planning and, you know, making sure we're coming to school with material. I wouldn't say it's a crazy amount because we do try to use our time in class pretty wisely, but um, we do take time outside of class, maybe an hour, hour and a half, um, just making sure we're ready the next day to get everything that we need to get done. Excellent. Thank you. Well, we appreciate all the hard work. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Scott, I believe they're going to switch uh, groups here. Okay. Here we go. Welcome. <laughs> Hi everyone, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Taylor Sanborn, I'm our student council president this year and I'm a senior at Midland High. My name is Mallory Fenske, I'm the secretary of the student council and I'm a junior this year at Midland High. Hi, I'm Allison Stifler. I'm the treasurer of student council, and this year I'm a junior. Hello, I am Xander Pellegrino, and I'm the vice president of student council, and I'm a junior. So we are here today to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into two organizations that are very important to all of us, that is Midland High Student Council and Midland High Student Leadership. So to begin, I'm going to kind of cover a comparison between student council and student leadership. The one disclaimer I'm going to give is there is a lot of overlap in what we do between that student council and student leadership, and we work really cohesively together to carry, a lot, to carry out a lot of the events that we're going to be covering today. Um, for student leadership, we meet for one hour every day during third hour. We focus a lot on activities to help improve school morale and to spread awareness to our student body. Especially in the way that this past year has been, our main goal is to bring joy and light to Midland High and that we can help improve the lives of our students every day. Um, we also take time in class to cover leadership lessons. We go through a variety of topics that Mallory is actually going to talk about a little bit later um, to help build our, ourselves up and to look at our growth and ways that we can help improve the ways that we work with others because if, any, if this class has taught us anything, it's that we everyone comes from a different perspective and there's a lot of value and importance in that. Um, we also like to come up with fun strategies to help engage with the student body in different ways because we know that our student body is very diverse and we like to appreciate that and hope to engage them in different ways. As for student council, we meet every Thursday at 7 a.m. Um, this year especially we meet in our media center so we can properly social distance with COVID, but we meet for about 35 to 40 minutes every Thursday. Um, we focus a lot on in-school and out-of-school activities to help engage the community as well as our student body. We do events surrounding important subjects like One Billion Rising, which may be something that you guys have heard of before. It's an, it's a event that focuses on raising awareness about domestic violence and how that affects all people. We also, like I said, put a lot of emphasis on community engagement, which Xander is going to cover later, and just making sure that as an organization, we are looking to serve those around us, um, not just in our school. And as I said before with One Billion Rising, we like to focus on topics that are impactful and that are important to our students. Um, so we try to reach them in a variety of different ways. So this year we had to do a lot of different things with online school since we had to be online as well as in school. So currently right now we're actually working on the virtual talent show since we can't have Rap City. This is where students will send their talents in video form and then we'll put on a presentation and then send it up to the student body for everyone to see. And we always have spirit weeks but we try to make a lot of them this year just to raise school morale. And then especially this year we have different weeks dedicated to different topics. So this week is environmental week and two weeks ago was grief week. So that's like the serious topics such as DEI, and we had also had a kindness week. 
mental health is a really big thing we've been focusing on this year just because with everything going on, students need more help than ever. And for some of our fun topics, we have Waffle Week, Pineapple Oreo Festival, and Milk Week, which also raised school morale with this message to help students. And with online school, we had a lot of social media activities. Our main platform is Instagram as well as Twitter. So one of the things we put out around Christmas time was the Staff Elf Yourselves, where we put different faculty on Little Elf, and they would dance just to put on social media for some fun. And then Instagram trivia, for example, we did like staff member trivia, some of the questions about them, and you do a little poll and guess which one you think is correct. And a big thing we also did was reaching out to Chemex. So a student from leadership would put out a survey, and students who needed help or just someone to lean on or to talk to could talk to fellow Chemex. Virtual Spirit Weeks, when we were online, basically we'd send out what the days were, they'd post a picture of their little outfit or whatever they were doing, tag our leadership account, and we'd repost it so that everyone could see it. Um, simplicity, basically the easier it was to do social media Spirit Weeks, the more people would do it, so we made them simple. We also did a collaboration with Dow High last year, which we did the Race to California on the Strava app, which basically just collaborates with both of the schools and you can track miles, and we did the first school to reach California. So these are just some of the pictures from our different events that we've done um, throughout the past year and even past that. Um, as you'll notice, we have a picture of Yell Night in here, which is another, in a non-COVID year, one of our best events that we put on. Um, and usually we have about 500 students that come, which as far as participation goes, that's pretty fantastic. So I will be talking about different community connections that we have. And so Student Council and Student Leadership works within our community with the Eastern Michigan Food Pantry and Midland EFPN, the Legacy Center for Community Success, the Children's Grief Center of the Great Lakes Bay Region, and Shelter House of Midland. And so in these pictures, in that picture we have what we did this last winter, which was a food donation for families in need at Midland High, where we got more than enough food than ever expected and over $1,000 in gift cards and cash. And we were able to use that for our families and we were able to give it to the Midland Eastern Food Pantry Network. That is a picture of our vaping, our anti-vaping team and they are the ones who did everything in our school that, who the Legacy Center helped with and they were able to give the information out to the student body and to have an impact on that. That is also their logo for Get Your Heads Out of the Clouds. Mm -hmm. um, that is from last year where we had the Emergency Food Pantry of Michigan help us have a food drive to help families in need. And that is from two weeks ago where we had our grief walk, which the Children's Grief Center helped with. And we, it was an amazing event, and we had such an impact on a topic that doesn't get talked a lot about, and it had a huge impact on our school and community. And that is another picture from our food drive that we did this past winter. <laughs> So like Taylor mentioned earlier, a thing that we try to focus on a lot during our leadership classes is like growing our own leadership abilities. So right now we're actually working on a book study um, with the book, The Great Mental Models. And the author of that is Shane Parrish. And we're also working um, with a leadership class from Florida, kind of to talk about those things, get different perspectives on that. Um, and basically what the book is about is like different mental like thinking concepts that maybe you don't even realize you use in your daily life but kind of like how to apply those into our own like leadership situations that we face to be more like productive and avoid the issues that we may face. Um, we also do lessons with Tyler Porter from The Rock. So he comes in every once in a while and does a lesson with us. Um, one of the ones that's been very impactful for me personally is every year we do a lesson about the VIA character strengths survey um, and it kind of helps us identify where our strengths are and the weaknesses that we may have so we can set goals to improve in those areas. Um, and then we also have collaboration with experts. So um, we just had a presenter come in last Thursday named Andrea Foster from Little Forks Conservancy to teach us more about diversity, equity, inclusion, which is what DEI stands for. Um, and her main emphasis of that presentation was how to be an effective ally, um, which kind of will help us set up our goals. So this May, we're kind of working towards having a month full um, thing about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and like how we can become better allies for our entire student body. So... 
The last thing that we're going to talk about is the impact that this class has had on all of us individually. So I'm going to touch on the importance of reflection. Reflection is something that we practice a lot in leadership, and it's basically the idea of looking back on your past experiences and evaluating how you handled them and perhaps how the impact of what the impact of them was. By looking back on this, it allows you to recognize your own growth and realize how you've changed because there is a lot of power in your own growth, which I don't think a lot of people give enough credit for because in a lot of cases you don't spend time on it. So realizing this is something that is very, very impactful on me personally and something that I hope to carry out throughout the rest of my life. My biggest takeaway from student leadership and student council for the past three years has been realizing that everyone's perspective is important and that it doesn't matter who you are, that you have something to offer to the table and that being open-minded and realizing that everyone has something to say, it's going to get it's gonna be a lot easier to get to the solution of the problem and that you're going to grow personally from it because you're going to be getting more knowledge than you had when you started. Um, my biggest takeaway was honestly big, like good communication skills and self-confidence. Going into leadership, I was a really big introvert. I would try to stay away from this as much as possible. <laughs> and as well as just having good connections with people with good communication skills. And my biggest takeaway from being in student leadership is learning how to work with people who have different strengths and also learning about like the importance of like amplifying those strengths in other people. Like recognizing, recognizing areas where we can let other people grow is a really important part of leadership. So that's our presentation. Um, we'd be happy to take any questions if you guys have them for us. Do you recognize your teacher too? Oh, yes. Um, our wonderful advisor is Mrs. Albright. She's sitting over there. Um, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we do without her. So thanks, Mrs. Albright. <laughs> okay. We will open it up to any questions or comments. I'm sure we've got a handful of them for you. I have a question. How do you, how do you become an active ally as a student? Okay, so one of the biggest things that we kind of learned about in that presentation was the concept of how, like, when to let others speak and when to, like, amplify others' voices. So a lot of our student leadership class um, is white, and we don't have as much, like, racial diversity, I guess you would say, in that class. So we kind of learned about the importance of educating ourselves but allowing other people to speak that maybe have those experiences that we don't. So our biggest thing that we're taking away from that and kind of trying to implement into that presentation, like I said in May, is how to provide people with the resources to learn about those experiences if maybe they didn't have them themselves, and then how to then go on to be someone who can be an ally for those people and amplify their voices. Very good. I think you guys had a great presentation. It was fantastic. Um, and I keep forgetting to turn my mic on. I apologize. <laughs> Great presentation. Um, from a, a DEI perspective, it, it is very, I guess, warming and comforting to know that there are student organizations that are not just looking at this as a buzzword because it's not. You guys uh, are taking it to heart. And in that lens, how are you growing that and kind of disseminating that throughout the student body? Okay, so I guess the way I could answer that question. So basically kind of the outline of what we're doing, I guess you could say, is we actually met separately with our presenter. So Andrea Foster is her name. We met separately. We have a group in leadership just defined like social justice in those areas of learning. Um, and kind of the breakdown for the month that we're trying to do right now is kind of focusing on the ideas of appreciation versus appropriation and then how to like I guess you would say, like, respect cultures without taking them as your own and, like, recognizing the difference between that. Um, and then also we're kind of going to be talking a little bit about, like, how, like, sometimes the things that, like, we haven't been educated on are the reasons for why we might have, like, internal biases that we don't really recognize. Um, so kind of just educating on maybe those areas that we haven't really heard about before. Okay. Uh, one final question for me. Uh, you mentioned a, a mental health component. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, uh, maybe in the context of COVID and, and how that component has adapted pre and post? Um, I definitely think, because I was in leadership as well last year, it was definitely prominent, but it was not as prominent as it is this year. I know that Dow touched on it as well. I think there's 10 people from leadership who are also in peer-to-peer -peer as well. We work with Dow. And we've just been trying to reach out to them. And the peer-to-peer -peer members, basically, we advertise it 
as we have been trained for safe talk, which is like as someone comes to you to talk about suicidal feelings, you have the training to give them the resources. So they can go to any of those 10 members and from there they can get the help they need, as well as the kindness committee who has been put out a survey and basically if you needed anyone to talk to, if you just need someone to lean on, these people will email back with you and you'll have a person to talk to. Okay. Very cool. cool. Do you guys do any fundraising for your, your various events? And if you do, this is a chance for you to get a, a plug out to the community. <laughs> um, I guess in past years, the biggest fundraiser that we did was for our mobile food pantry that we hosted at Midland High. So um, we usually take around buckets at halftime of football games, okay. and we would ask for donations in that way. That was a big way that we would get money. I'm homecoming. Yeah. I mean, homecoming does serve as our, in past years, has served as our largest way to make money throughout the year. Um, we're very fortunate, though, to have um, people that are really willing to give. So I think that our ability to hold events, and as we talked about with our um, food drive that we held on MLK Day this year, it was more successful than any of us could have imagined. If any of you have been in Midland High, um, we have a large atrium at the front of our building, and the whole, the whole room was filled with food. Mm -hmm. And the amount of money that we received from people and the generosity that um, the community showed to us was more impactful than any of us could have ever imagined. I mean, when I say it's a lot of food, like I wish we would have put pictures in here because we were able to feed, I might have to ask Mrs. Albright, how many Midland High families? We did have these 10 Midland High families from the size of four members per family to one, we had a size of 10. Plus we gave 2,400 food items, 2,400 food items to the emergency food pantry. Um, and that's not including the donation. So the all of support by the community was amazing. That's great guys. That's really awesome. Yeah, we try and, um, some of the events, like, it's just not for profit. Like, we would rather just bring that joy to the student body than, and be able to provide them with something rather than, like, asking them for extra money so we can do other things. But I think that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Good on you. Thank you. Excellent. I wrote down uh, leadership lessons, and I put question marks at the very beginning, but everything you talked about and, and some of the uh, lessons that you've learned and our sharing with others now is very evident through not only the words you choose to, to share with us, but um, just in your, in your spirit here. So I'm glad you're a part of uh, leadership and student council, and, and uh, I hope that program continues to grow. We do, too. <laughs> Lynn, you got a comment? Yeah, I was just going to ask a question. I just, first of all, I want to compliment all of you. I mean, your leadership pros already standing up there and, and what great skills you have in communicating to us. But um, you talk about the peer-to-peer -peer programs, which are wonderful. Do you get a, a fair amount of response for that? I know that sometimes people are sensitive to wanting to open up to others. but um. Um, At the current moment, I do not think so, but I also still think there's a really big stigma about mental health and trying to get help. So I think, yes, we put it out there, and we're always advertising because we want to help students, but there's still a stigma that we're working on breaking, and we hope that peer-to-peer -peer can break that stigma of getting help. I applaud you for trying. It's such, such an important issue. Thanks for coming in, guys. We really, really appreciate your time tonight, and you're doing a fantastic job. Please keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, man. I tell you what, I have missed the student presentation. I was just going yeah. nice to say, yeah, that was nice to, to listen to those again. Right. Um, okay, Mike, shining stars, three point two. So we had students in front of us, and do we have staff that are coming today? Megan, or Cindy? No. Okay, we're going to recognize without them being in front of us. So our shining stars for March first one is Katie Portapillo. Katie joined the NPS team in 2018 as a preschool teacher at the Carpenter Street School Primary Center. Katie earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in Child Development and reading from Central Michigan University in 2004. Katie was nominated for a Shining Star by a pre-primary center parent. Among their comments were the following. Miss P, an excellent preschool teacher and one of the best teachers I have ever met. My child loves being in her class. He feels welcomed, appreciated, and cared for when he, in, when he is in Mrs. P's class. She challenges him to do his best. She is consistently going above and beyond to make sure her students are ready for kindergarten, while also caring for the social and emotional needs. My son has learned so much from her in academics and social skills, and he is so happy when he is at school with her. 
I love that NPS such, has such a nurturing and dedicated teacher who makes my child feel cared for while he's away from home. We are so lucky to have her as a teacher during this unprecedented school year. Congratulations, Katie, if you are listening tonight. Our second shining star from Arch is Lindsay Timmerman. Ms. Timmerman joined the MPS team this school year as a school counselor at Jefferson Middle School. Lindsay earned her English and Communications Bachelor's of Arts degree from Hope College and her Master's degree in School Counseling from Butler University. Lindsay was nominated for a Shining Star by her Jefferson colleague. Among their comments were the following. Lindsay has come to our building this year and in just a few short months has entirely changed the counseling experience for students and teachers at Jefferson Middle School. She is open and vulnerable, caring, emotionally intelligent, and an advocate for all. She's created a safe place for students and virtually, students virtually and face-to-face. -face. Each month, she shares with staff all sorts of statistics about our work, and she's created an online classroom space for her students. Facilitate the creation and running of our new GSA program, and uses her platform to make sure all are included. She's educating teachers, supporting students, and doing a tremendous job. I've never had a school counselor like this in, in the district or buildings. Thank you, Lindsay. Congratulations, Lindsay. I know both of them personally, and they are both so very, very deserving of this award. So it's nice to see that they're being recognized. Okay, um, item four, request to address the board. There are none tonight. All right, let's move on to item five, CIA. We have item 5.1, Lynn, with minutes. I do. The element, uh, we met on February 15th, and we started with the Elementary Virtual Academy. The group visited Bobby Arthur's third grade virtual classroom. In addition to experiencing the virtual environment, students shared their successes and challenges with this mode of learning. Ms. Arnold shared her insights from the teacher perspective. Kelly McArdle, Jeff Lauer, and Jen Service provided a general update about the Virtual Academy and discussed the district level successes and challenges. Then there was a DEI update. DeAndre Hogan and Amy Beasley provided an update about the DEI strategy and action team. Dr. Beasley will be transitioning back to Dow the first week of March. MPS appreciates her expertise and leadership during her time with us and is thankful to Dow for the opportunity. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Next up is an item 5.2. This is an action item. This is our extended COVID-19 learning plan monthly reconfirmation. And I think that's, that's me. Penny. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, similar uh, content as we do each month now for our extended COVID learning uh, plan. Uh, we're happy to report that there is no significant change in our instructional delivery. We still have students in grades uh, DK through 12 who are accessing in-person learning, which we're very proud of, um, as well as those who continue in the virtual space. Uh, this is the same data that was supplied to you in February and reflects our updated enrollment numbers uh, for students who are 100% remote and then those who are not 100% remote, meaning blended um, or in person. Uh, so again, students uh, receiving special education services, 24% and 76% respectively, are economically disadvantaged at 29% and 71% respectively, and our English language learners, we have 36% and uh, 64%. A summary of public comment that we've uh, received this past, since our last board meeting, and thank you to Cindy Young who helps us collect these through multiple modes, including um, emails, uh, personal communications with many of us in leadership. So again, we continue to receive uh, expressions of appreciation for uh, virtual learning during second semester. We had a parent reach out expressing concern about the high school virtual learning schedule and pace uh, being, um, being a little bit different than what face-to-face -face is. We have a family member who inquired about the possibility of virtual learning for elementary uh, next school year. A family member expressing sincere appreciation that we have worked so hard to keep our students in face-to-face, in-person learning this year. And finally, a parent asked a question about NWEA testing and the district's use of student data. I'll turn this over to Jeff to speak to our attendance data. 
Good evening. Uh, the following attendance numbers, uh, just a reminder, these represent the percent of students with at least two two-way interactions since the February board meeting. And I will note that uh, these are the most up-to-date numbers available that I'm going to read for you, and so they're going to differ slightly than what is on your screen. Uh, so back to the week of February 15th, all students uh, were recorded at 97%, those that are 100% remote, 92%, and then the group that was not 100% remote was 99 The following week, those numbers were 97%, 89%, and then 97%. The first week of March, um, all students, 97%. Those that were 100% remote were 90 or 90 percent rather, and then those not 100 percent remote were 98. And then just this past week, um, these have just been updated to reflect that we had 93 percent of all students um, with at least two two-way interactions, 82 percent that were 100 percent remote, and then 96 percent that were not 100 percent remote. So uh, sometimes they change the following week because teachers and uh, the e-learning facilitators have a window of 10 days to make corrections to attendance, so they usually continue to bump up. That's all we have for you. So, uh, so, so Jeff, are you saying that 69% for 100% remote, 3, 8, 21, their thinking could be because teachers give 10 days to respond? Is that it, what you're saying? It, what I'm saying is there's, there's a correction period, so if they missed a student, uh, there are many different ways students can be counted. Sometimes if they've missed an actual class period, they can go back in and do a lesson. Virtually in some cases, they can turn in an assignment. So there are different ways for those kids who are remote to get uh, credit for being in attendance on those days it, because it's not face-to-face, -face, obviously, like they would be in a traditional room. Right. And so that number, um, when I update those, I usually do it, the end of the previous week uh, before the board meeting. So as of last Friday, it was 69%. Uh, this morning, it was 82%. So it was already increased. So that tells me that over the weekend, there were teachers who were oh, gotcha. going back through assignments and giving credit uh, for those students who participated that way. Okay. So when we, um, do we have to report this data to the state at a certain time? I, the way I view it is we will update this until the night of the board meeting. So what I just shared with you um, has been updated in our active uh, document. This uh, information that was part of your agenda packet, obviously, again, that was from the previous oh, gotcha. week. So okay, that as, makes sense. As of today, those numbers are higher. Okay, thanks. Yep. We, do upload this. we do upload this report to the transparency link on our website. So. Um, as soon as you take action mm -hmm. on this, I download that and send it to Brian, who has the, mm -hmm. the control to that, and it's posted. Uh, and then we submit our monthly report in the state GEMS system. It's not detailed attendance data, but it's all the other data. As well as our attendance is monitored by the state to meet a threshold in order to get payment for that day. Okay. All right. Thank you both. With that said, I will accept the motion for the adoption of item 5.2. So moved. Support. That was, okay, motion by John's uh, support by Phil. Uh, any further discussion regarding 5.2? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, motion carries. Thank you. All right, next up, we are in FFO. This is item 6.1, Facility Finance and Operations Study Committee Minutes. Mr. Lauterbach. Thank you. Uh, the committee met on March 1st. Uh, had a fairly long agenda. Uh, item one was the East Lawn property. Sharon Mortensen and Grant Marshall from the City of Midland. Uh, Sharon from the Midland Area Community Foundation and Grant Marshall from the City of Midland spoke with the committee on the potential future purposing of the East Lawn property for housing development. We covered January financials. The January 2021 revenues and expenditures were down in comparison to January 2020. This is mostly due to an additional payroll and the timing of the receipt of winter taxes in January 2020. Next, we covered the performance contract energy bond update. The committee was reminded of the March 9th date of the sale and pending ratification resolution at the March board meeting, which we'll take up in a few minutes. Um, we talked about the uh, MHS cafeteria furniture. The administration will recommend uh, the purchase of new 
Cafeteria Furniture for Midland High School from Great Lakes Furniture of Holland, Michigan. Food service funds will be utilized for the purchase if it's approved. Kitchen equipment. Bids were solicited for kitchen equipment to be placed at Midland High, Dow High, and the Pre-Primary Center. The equipment order will outfit each high school with a personal pizza cafe. Administration will recommend award to Stafford Smith Incorporated of Bay City, Michigan. Food service funds will be utilized for the purchase if approved. Administration Center Carpet. Bids were solicited for carpet replacement for the Administration Center. Uh, the administration will recommend awarding uh, the contract to Everett Carpet Company of Midland, Michigan. Capital project funds will be utilized for the purchase if approved. Administration Center asbest Asbestos Abatement. Bids were solicited for asbestos abatement at the Administration Center. The administration will recommend award to Quality Environmental Services of Lansing, Michigan. Capital project funds will be utilized for the service if approved. We talked about the nat uh, natural gas bid. Bids were solicited for natural gas supply for the MPS. Uh, administration will bring a recommendation for award to the board following consulting with an industry expert. Uh, finally, MCEA bargaining. Details of the tentative agreement with the MCEA were shared with the committee. And we will next meet on Monday, April 12 at 5 p.m. Okay, thank you very much. All right, as alluded to, we have a series of action items, starting with 6.2. This is the Administration uh, Center Carpet. Mr. Bruton. Yep, thank you, Scott. Um, items 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4 are all tied into our energy bond project that we've been talking about for quite some time now. And so 6.2 starts that off with us asking for your approval to um, award a bid for carpet to Everett Carpet Company of Midland, Michigan in the amount of $105,487, and that will be for the complete replacement of carping throughout this building. Um, capital projects funds are going to be utilized for this purchase if we have your approval this evening. I move to approve item 6.2, spending $105,487 on carpet replacement for the Edmund building. Support. Motion by Pam, support by John Hatfield. Any further discussion? Was that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, any further discussion uh, regarding 6.2? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, continuing on with 6.3, um, this is the action item for asbestos abatement in this building related to our energy bond project. And after seeking bids, we are recommending tonight to award that bid to Quality Environmental Services of Lansing, Michigan, in the amount of $109,100. And again, using our capital projects funds to fund the purchase, if we have your approval this evening. I move the adoption of item 6.3, awarding the uh, asbestos abatement to Quality Environmental Services of Lansing, Michigan in the amount of $109,100. Support. Motion by John Lauterbach, support by Phil. Any discussion regarding item 6.3? When you say capital projects funds, is that a, is it a separate account that you're going to have for that, Brian, or is that just our that, that's a part fund. of our capital projects fund. There, there is a 2021 capital projects fund that will be set up after 6.4 mm -hmm. that is simply for the bond proceeds. That is outside of this purview. This is our internal capital projects funds that we fund various projects throughout the year. That's for this project and also for the carpet that you approved previously as well, too. Okay. So, Brad, each year we load... Um, when you approve the budget, it's mm -hmm. general fund money, so we load that into that for capital improvements for the year. Okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 6.4, we brought to you tonight our bond ratification resolution. As Mr. Shero wrote to you in the Friday letter, we went out to bid with the assistance of PFM, our financial advisors, last week to the market and we are pleased to bring to you tonight um, a true interest cost bid from the Robert W. Baird and Company of 1.575% which we were very very happy to be able to get that bid. It was a competitive bid market with seven bids um, with a pretty tight range 
and a lot of interest. So tonight we ask you to approve that ratification resolution, which will finalize the bond sale and will also allow us to deposit those funds into the proper accounts and begin this project. Okay, thank you. Can we make Bye. a motion to approve the bond resolution as noted in the board pack, item 6.4. Support. Okay, motion by Phil, support by John Lauterbach. Was that correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, any further discussion regarding item 6.4? Nice job getting 1.575. Yeah. Ah. Great. I think stability and credit rating was a factor in that, and then we hit the market extremely well. In fact, of that day, it's the, it was the best rate they had. I think by the end of the week, they had one that slightly beat us, but that's it. Ah, that's great news. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Motion carries. All right, Brian, 6.5. Thank you, sir. Um, we have done an in-depth analysis um, with our food service department um, to try and take a look at the best wise use of funds for us to spend down our food service monies. Um, if you remember from last year, we did have an excess amount of food service funds that we were looking to spend down. Analysis with that team led us to the furniture, or excuse me, to furniture, which you'll see in 6.6, .6, um, but also the need for kitchen equipment throughout the district as well, too. So in this item, we are asking you to approve an extensive equipment list that will be placed primarily at three locations. The first location is Midland High, the second location is Dow High, and the third location is the pre-primary center. At both Midland High and Dow High, we are excited that this will put in a personal pizza cafe at each of these buildings, which will in real simple terms, allow kids to basically go to kind of a Subway pizza bar, put it through a real fast oven, um, and give them an option to be able to have a different type of food um, that's very personalized for them at um, each of their schools, hopefully keeping more kids choosing to eat on campus. Um, hence, giving us more food service funds to work with as well, too. At the pre-primary center, because of the volume of students that we have over in that building, we did need um, steamer and chiller as well, too. So we are asking you to award that bid of equipment to Stafford Smith of Bay City, Michigan in the amount of $137,389, and that will be out of food service funds if approved this evening. Thank you, Brian. I move adoption of item 6.5, awarding the contract to Stafford Smith Incorporated of Bay City, Michigan in the amount of $137,389. Support. Motion by John Lauterbach, support by John Hatfield. I think you had it there. Um, any further discussion regarding 6.5? Lucky kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, Brian, 6.6. .6. Thank you. So continuing along that same lines, the analysis with the food service funds also led us to the Midland High School cafeteria as the area that was most in need of a furniture upgrade. So we worked with the administrative team over at Midland High, and we also worked with one of our furniture vendors um, to put together a design that we felt um, fit the needs of the student and staff over at Midland High. And we're recommending, recommending this evening issuing a purchase order for $92,125 to Great Lakes Furniture Supply of Holland, Michigan. This uses um, the regional competitive bidding process that we've used for all other furniture procurement that does follow board policy. From time to time, we do seek independent quotes just to make sure that that is the best pricing that we can get. And from the quote tab that you saw um, included with your paperwork tonight, it is still viable and the best pricing option for that furniture. So we're recommending that approval tonight to upgrade the furniture over at Midland High School in their cafeteria. I would love to to motion for action this Midland High Cafeteria Furniture Purchase for $92,125 to Great Lakes Furniture Supply. I, I would love to second it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've quicker. all been there. Okay, motion by Pam, support by Lynn. Any further discussion regarding 6.6? .6? Original furniture in that in there that's been retopped, so we got our... <laughs> service out of that furniture so yeah. wow fantastic yeah i've been thinking that needed to be replaced for about seven years now so this is great yeah great news brian thank you okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay motion carries thank you next up 6.7 brian 
Thank you. Um, we are ending term of our current two-year contract um, for natural gas, and so we went out to market to seek bids for providing natural gas to the Midland Public Schools. And in the bid tabulation, you can see that we had interest from several different suppliers, and we were provided with fixed rates and also with variable rates as well, too, as well as customized options. After talking with FFO and getting leads to some very helpful local experts that um, really have lived and breathed um, natural gas for their career, we are recommending this evening the award of the bid to Realty Energy Services of Okemos, Michigan, and they are providing something called the Michigan Guaranteed Savings Agreement, which in general terms provides gas to us at a guaranteed rate of 2.5% below current market rate. And that will be a contract um, that will be locked in for two years. Okay. Make I move, move that we uh, accept the recommendation in item 6.7 to enter into the contract with Real G Energy Services of Okemos, Michigan for the Michigan Guaranteed Savings Agreement. Support. Okay, motion by John Lauterbach, support by Phil. Any further discussion regarding 6.7? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries, and that takes us to our last action item, I believe, for, for now. Yeah, um, thank you. Item 6.8, Brian. Uh, we are seeking your approval for one gift this evening. Uh, the gift is a total of $10,000. The generous donor was Mr. Mark Craig, and he donated that to the H.H. Dow baseball program with no specific use designated to it, um, but the coach and athletic director are currently seeking the best way to use those funds to benefit the baseball program. So we would appreciate your approval this evening to accept that gift on behalf of the H.H. Dow baseball program. I move that we accept the gift in item 6.8, totaling $10,000 to the Dow Baseball Program. Support. Okay, motion by John Hatfield, support by John Lauterbach. Any discussion regarding 6.8? Other than a giant thank you to right. Mr. Craig for that donation. Absolutely. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we have item 6.9. This is information only. Yep, 6.9. We are presenting for information tonight our thanks on behalf of nine gifts to the Midland Public Schools um, for $12,574.29. And these gifts range all the way from food service scholarships to athletic supplies. And we certainly appreciate the generosity of each of these donors, and we'll be recognizing them in the credits tonight of this broadcast. We appreciate their generosity to the Midland Public Schools. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. Okay, that takes us to item 7.1 under human resources. Mr. Jaster. Thank you. Um, I'll just note that before we start, uh, the month of March is when we see the largest number of employees announcing retirements because early retirement notifications are usually due in February, and so this is an extensive list, and it has uh, many different employee groups represented, bus drivers, teachers, some administrators, and so... Uh, depending on the employee group, the final date may be slightly different. So most teachers, for example, will show a retirement date of June 11th. Paraprofessional bus driver might be the 10th. And then administrators are typically later as their contracts go until June 30. So those dates vary slightly. But I'm going to try to go through the list fairly quickly because it's about two and a half pages here. So uh, first on the list, Jane Camaletti, teacher at Jefferson. Robert Charlton, bus driver, transportation department. Cynthia Greskowiak, teacher, Plymouth Elementary. Ann Gunsel, teacher, Woodcrest Elementary. Dana Hahn, bus driver, transportation. Lori Kenimer, administrative assistant, Midland High School. Angie Kerr, teacher, Midland High School. Jill Crush, teacher, Adams. Mary Lachance, speech and language pathologist in special services. Viv Lajewski, paraprofessional, Jefferson. Jackie Majestic, teacher at H.H. Dow. Libby Marsh, teacher, Midland High. Janet Maycheck, administrative assistant, Adams Elementary. Mary Minier, paraprofessional, Adams Elementary. Bill Monroe, teacher, Midland High School. Melinda Plogger, teacher, H.H. Dow. Christy Prout, teacher, Plymouth Elementary. Lindy Rip Linda Rippey, excuse me, bus driver, transportation. Mary Beth Rodriguez, teacher, Northeast. 
Amy Rye Fisher, teacher, Plymouth Elementary. Mark Schaefer, building manager, Jefferson Middle School. Bob Skirfield, assistant principal, Midland High School. Rosaltha Sevener, teacher, Midland High School. Sherry Soapsack, teacher, Plymouth Elementary. Troy Staley, teacher, Woodcrest. Corrine Stanifer, teacher, Jefferson Middle School. Kelly Van Wert, paraprofessional, Adams Elementary. Sharon Weselowski, teacher, Chestnut Hill. And then Mary Wynn, teacher at Woodcrest. And so we wish to congratulate the entire group. And obviously this represents many, many years of experience and commitment to MPS. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. And we wish them all well in their future endeavors. Um, next up is item 8. We have 8.1. Uh, these are letters from the Board of Education uh, to a number of uh, folks listed on the agenda. Um, 9.1 is just the list of our remaining regularly scheduled uh, Board of Agenda meetings. And finally, that takes us to our study discussion session. Is there anything that needs further clarification or discussion before we turn the floor over to Mike? I have a question. How does, question for Jeff, how does the, the number of retirements this year compare to previous years? I actually think that this is a slightly larger group than the previous year, but um, I confess this is only my second time doing this list, so I guess I can't give you more than that. Okay. It'd be on the... <coughs> it's not large group. It's, okay. it's kind of average or slightly below average right okay. now. So, um, And I think the teacher side, you'll continue to see that stay in that range just basically because of um, most of, the, of us baby boomers are out, and so we're getting to be a younger staff at this point in time. Thank you. Okay, Mike, the floor is yours. Um, I wrote to you last week that we met uh, with the NAS, NACCP out of Saginaw and Bay City. We had a very good meeting. DeAndre had reached out to them and began a collaboration with them as well um, as we move through um, DEI and NPS. Um, Mark's here tonight in the room, and we, it was very good negotiation sessions with the MCA. We hope they'll ratify uh, this week. Friday, this week, and we'll know at the end, and if they do so, then we'll bring that back to you for approval in April. Tonight, we'll go into closed session just to discuss the final terms with all of you and keep you up to date before the April meeting going on. No action will be taken tonight when we come out, but that's just to give you information. Um, supplemental budget was signed by the governor. Um, it left uh, about 60% of the funds on the table, and there's some issues we see in the 40% with some rules that were written in there. Um, I've talked to my colleagues throughout the state. We've been uh, um, talking to our legislators in that, but most of the funds that they targeted for summer school are probably going to go unmatched. None of us are going to be able to meet the thresholds they set for that. It was really Their answer is really they were targeting school districts who had not met face-to-face, -face, and then therefore they set a very long summer session for them to go to school. And for us to encourage teachers at the length of year we've had um, to teach eight more weeks during the summer, face-to-face -face is an uphill battle, as well as probably with many parents and students as well. So we probably will do some planning um, to still make it rigorous, um, use some maybe some blended approaches, some creative approaches, and we will. We are targeting to have a very good summer school, a large group if possible, but probably a little more flexibility in that schedule and using all the tools that we have and do so. So I think they took some of that creativity away from us in order to qualify for the dollars. Doesn't mean we won't try to qualify for some if that's possible and getting creative as well. Spring and summer construction is ready to start, and so I wrote to you a little bit. I think the stadium might be the first thing you'll notice as they tear into that um, for weather permitting. Um, April 1st of uh, this building, we will be out of here on the Friday of spring break, so next Friday, and they'll begin the asbestos abatement in this building as well. Um, several other small projects, a lot of tiling throughout the district, a lot of floor removal, some HVAC equipment again this summer being targeted throughout the district. Almost every building except for elementary get touched in some capacity again. So, so will everybody's office move over to the admin center then? Correct. We find, found I mean, a home in the there. Um, probably. Park? Probably only able to do it because of COVID and not as much performing arts going on face to face. Uh, so that actually worked in our favor. And so uh, all of us have found some spaces um, in that building to make it work. Thank you, JR, our um, auditorium director, 
for housing us and figuring that out for us. And so it'll be a little inconvenient. Um, we were debating if we should use that large former upstairs library for the board meeting, which some of the, some of us are housed there, or we may look at Central Park um, cafeteria. We got to decide the next couple of days where we're going to put you. So the next uh, three or four board meetings it might be a little bit different than what we've been having, but we're getting used to that, right? And I was just thinking, John, is this your first face-to-face? -face yes, board? it is. I, I, for example, I mean, holy smokes, huh, John? Yeah. And it's nice to have John face-to-face -face in a board meeting, so that's a good example. Of Will we that. be televised for those? Yeah, I think Dave has a plan to be able to televise, maybe not quite as a... Um, zoom in on you and all the effects of that. It may be a little, little different camera angles, okay, as we mm -hmm. go, but we will be able to televise that for the audiences. PIC, I sent you a link on PIC, and, and I don't always do that, and I encourage you to go take a look because um, two things on there I think are quite important. Our elementary schools are year six or seven in the IBPYP process, and they're being reauthorized, and there's a lot of stress over that um, as we go, and there's a lot of work going into that. So I'd like you to do that. Justin Hill is going next week, next week and so it's starting, and so I'd like you to watch that. The other one, one of the uh, shining stars tonight was our new counselor at Jefferson who has some great background on restorative practices. And I've done a lot of reading through the years on restorative practices. I, was, I think I started off with zero-based suspensions. It was one of my goals in the district, and I thought that was restorative, and I've kind of uh, been re-educated by her and listening to her. So if you want to get a little bit of feel, because even in that presentation, there's a lot more behind this of what restorative practices, because I think we're going to have to educate our community you as board members, even our teachers, a little bit more what that means because I think people have the wrong stigma of what we're trying to do with the restorative. So start there if you can. Go take a look and, re and we'll keep bringing that back to you. At some point maybe we'll have her present right in front of you a little bit on and get you involved in the committees because it's pretty powerful if we get it fully implemented in fidelity. So, so. that's all, Scott. Okay. Uh, at this time, take a motion to go to Correct. Move to go into closed session. All right. You have to say why we're yeah, yeah, you have to say Oh, why. sorry to up, then update regarding collective bargaining with the Midland City Education Association. Thank you, Pam. Support by John Hatfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.